Hello Sake Geeks, my name is Dominic the Sake Geek. If you're just getting into sake or if you're head over heels already for the greatest drink in the world, you have found your people. Don't forget to like and subscribe. One of the first messages I got from a subscriber was to make a video about sake glassware. So tonight's video is going to be all about that. We'll talk about some of the traditional uh, vessels used to enjoy sake in the past and in the present. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some recommendations for uh, what kind of sake to drink uh, with what kind of shaped glass. Here we go. If you've been to a sushi restaurant in the United States or elsewhere around the world, you may have enjoyed a uh, hot sake from a small glass uh, like this. Some people, when they see a small glass like this, they liken it to a shot glass and they just kind of go back all at once. It's really not designed to do that, but if you like to do it that way, you know, to each his own. Uh, this is called an ochoco, and an ochoco is very small, um, and it's meant to be small because uh, traditionally at the Japanese table, you're very conscious of what the other people are doing around you. And so it's a way of showing your generosity if you notice that the person's cup is uh, empty and you're the one to fill up their cup. Oftentimes in formal settings, you're not supposed to pour your own glass. Ochoko are very small, um, very easy to drink from. And uh, if you're a sake tourist like me, you might be able to get a souvenir from your favorite brewery or sake festival or restaurant. So the next shape that you might encounter uh, is called the sakazuki. And if you notice the difference between the ochoko and the sakazuki, the sakazuki has a much uh, shallower cup to it and a much wider uh, edge to it. So more of the surface of the sake is exposed uh, to the air. So when you're drinking sake out of uh, sakazuki like this, you're basically getting the aroma straight to your nose. The aroma of the sake is much more prevalent when you're drinking from a sakazuki. Also, uh, because of the size of the rim, the flavor is kind of spreading out more in your mouth. So it's going to give you a more complex look at the flavor profile of the sake. Whereas with an ochoco, it's very small and it's, it's focusing the, the flavor just kind of in the front of your mouth or the, the tip of your tongue. So you might get more sweetness out of a, a smaller uh, rim like you find on the ochoco. The next kind of cup you might encounter um, while enjoying sake is a bit larger than the ochoco. You can see the size difference here. This is actually made by a, a friend of mine, Akira Satake, a very, very talented uh, potter who is based out of Asheville, North Carolina. The goinomi is uh, larger and the lip of the cup is a little bit thicker than the ochoco. So that size gives you a, a wider rim. Again, that's gonna kind of spread the flavor across your palate more than from a, a smaller ochoco. Some izakayas have a box of these guinomis and you can actually uh, choose which one you like. And the great thing about this, if you can get one that's um, wood fired like this and made by an artisan or a, a, a craftsman um, is each one is unique and the, the glaze that's used and the, and the texture of the guinomi is different from cup to cup and it really brings um, a whole another tactile element to the enjoyment of the, of the sake. The next vessel that you may have seen uh, is called a uh, masu. Masu is basically a box traditionally made of Japanese cedar or uh, sugi and really in modern times people don't drink from these as much um, although they were used during the Edo uh, period often with a, a little bit of salt on the corner, the first uh, sake and food pairing, uh, salt and sake. You might see them at an izakaya, uh, perhaps holding another glass inside. And it's quite common as a show of hospitality in izakaya in Japan to uh, fill your cup with sake to the brim and then to actually over pour and pour into the masu to show uh, how generous uh, again your host is being and although it's a little bit messy you can actually still drink the leftover from the masu however if you do that make sure you drink from the the corner not from from the straight edge because it could get a little bit um, messy because they're made from sugi there might also be a little bit of a cedar aroma to it which can kind of mess with the sake that you're drinking so that's something to think about so less traditional uh, way of enjoying sake is uh, with glassware glass was only introduced to japan within the last two or three hundred years or so so it's a bit less common than some of the more traditional 
ways to do it. But most people have a wine glass in their house. And if you're going to drink sake, a wine glass is certainly a good place to start. Um, the aromatics of sake are much more subtle, generally speaking, than with wine. So it makes sense to pour sake into a wine glass and kind of swirl it around and let those high walls of the glass kind of uh, trap some of those aromatics. And then, of course, when you're drinking, you get your nose in the cup. So it's a good way to heighten the aromas of the sake that you're drinking. Uh, you might also see um, a shape of a glass like this, basically a similar kind of bowl shape. Uh, the edges are on this one are kind of narrow to even further trap the, um, the delicate aromas coming from the sake. Um, traditionally, in Japanese table settings, there was no stemware, which is why you might see just this wine-shaped kind of goblet without the stem. And there's other shapes of glassware as well. Uh, this is the one that you might come into uh, contact with if you go to the izakaya. It, to me, it just kind of looks like a, a shot glass. You definitely don't want to be uh, shooting it down, though. And there are other shapes of glassware that you might find, a small glass ochoko like this and a taller glass um, like this, but again, with a kind of thin lip and a very narrow rim. So now that we've talked about all the different shapes uh, that are out there, is there any um, shape that's best for any kind of sake at any particular temperature? Um, certainly, if you are drinking cold sake or room temperature sake, um, you can try drinking that out of glass. As a, just a practical consideration, if you're drinking warm or hot sake, it's not going to stay warm very long in a glass. And it's also, there's no insulation to protect your hand from the heat. Um, so it would make not really for a very enjoyable uh, drinking experience. So if you're drinking room temperature or cold, um, glass would be okay. If you're drinking warm sake, you might go with a porcelain ochoco or a guinomi such as this. So glass for room temperature or cool. Uh, for warm sake, definitely uh, earthware or porcelain, but you can drink room temperature or cool sake or cold sake out of these as well. It's totally up to your preference. Another cup shape that's less common outside of Japan, but uh, more prevalent inside of Japan and certainly in the sake brewery um, is this one. It's called the Janome no Ochoko, or uh, Kiki Choko. And you'll notice the shape is kind of similar uh, to the Ochoko, but certainly the size is different. And the, the rim of the glass is also quite a bit thicker, but they have that, that bullseye pattern in the center. And actually the, the name Janome no Ochoko is uh, Snake's Eye Ochoko. Uh, why are the lines there? The lines are there so that you can um, perceive the clarity of the sake and also the color of the sake. And in fact, these uh, kiki choco are used oftentimes by judges in sake competitions in Japan. And if you visit a sake brewery, a kiki choco like this with the name of the um, sake brand on the side makes an awesome souvenir for a sake geek. So finally, some recommendations. Uh, pairing a sake with a particular glass that kind of shows off um, what's wonderful about that sake. Keep in mind, there is no perfect match between a sake and a glass shape. You, you should experiment, you should be uh, playful, and you should be patient, and don't take yourself too seriously. If you play around with different glass shapes, if you're a patient, I think you'll find the, the glass that works best for you for each sake. So this is a, a ginjo shoe from Fukushima Prefecture uh, made by Okunomatsu. Uh, their ginjo shoe is actually quite versatile. You can drink it warm, you can drink it room temperature or cold. The aromatics are pretty subdued, um, but they are there and it is a nice ginjo kind of aroma, a, a bit of a fruity aroma. So I'm gonna pair that with this um, White, white wine shaped glass um, that focuses the aromas uh, towards the top. It has a very uh, thin lip, so we can appreciate the sweetness of the sake and a more a focused impact of the taste, but also with the aromas there. 
the second sake I'm going to uh, pair is a, a Yamaha Junmai Shu, also from Fukushima Prefecture, and I'm going to be drinking that warmed out of a Sakazuki, uh, which will expose the surface of the sake and give me all of those great uh, earthy Yamaha aromas, but also spread the flavor around my palate so I'm getting the acidity from the sides as well as the sweetness uh, from the, the, the front. I've got it warmed up and ready to go. So again, a wine-shaped glass with a more fruity floral ginjo shu will be a good place uh, to start. It can be a junmai ginjo or dai ginjo as well, anything fruity and floral. Remember, those high walls of the wine glass are going to trap the aromas. Just remember, you're drinking sake, not wine, so the alcohol is higher. You shouldn't be filling your sake glass all the way to the top, unless you've had a long week. So here's the okunomatsu uh, ginjo shu. Right away, the aroma hits you. It's just almost spilling out of the glass. And the fact that I poured it and let it sit for a minute or two to let those molecules, uh, those aromatic compounds accumulate in there, when you stick your nose in there, you really get a hit of those um, aromatics. Ooh. A really, mm, a little bit of citrus in there. A really good ginjo shu is a great match for a wine glass like this. And now for the junmai shu, the Yamaha junmai from uh, Koken um, in Fukushima Prefecture. Koken Shuzo is the name of the brewery, and Koken is also the the brand name for this sake. I've got this warmed up to about 40, it was about 50 degrees Celsius when I took it off the stove, so it's probably a little bit cooler now. So here's the Sakazuki and the Yamaha Junmai. Mm. Going from one to the other is like uh, heaven and earth. The, the Ginjo Shu is so light and flurry and frugal. Uh, light and floral and fruity. And the Yamaha Junmai is um, very complex uh, with a lot of depth. This is a more subdued um, version of a, a Yamaha sake, um, but still with uh, quite good acidity. And the, the shape of the Sakazuki really helps to spread that around the palate. So if you've never tried warm sake before out of a, a, a vessel like this Sakazuki, I really encourage you to try it. Mm. I think you won't be disappointed. So uh, if you're looking for a recommendation, try a ginjo or dai ginjo shu uh, from a wine glass. Um, you can swirl it around, get the aromatics, and appreciate um, that quality that the brewer tried so hard to get into the bottle. Um, if you've never tried before a uh, junmai shu, specifically a Yamaha junmai, uh, warm it up, put it into a sakazuki like this, and I think you'll probably find something that maybe you can't out of uh, a smaller ochoko like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dominic, the Sake Geek. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This video came from a question I got from a viewer. So if you have any questions that you would like answered or uh, videos that you would like to see, by all means, um, send me a direct message and I'll do my best to uh, put a video together uh, to answer your questions. So uh, until next time, kanpai.